Bruno Fernandes. Yep, we're still talking about him. He's turned into the transfer saga of the summer. We always seem to get one. It seems Fernandes is that player this season for Manchester United. You remember that I did a full story look at the Fernandes to United transfer rumours earlier this summer. But what has happened since then? Has anything developed? And with only about 11 days left in the transfer window, are we close to signing the Portuguese midfielder from Sporting Lisbon? I'm going to run through all of that in today's full story part two, taking a look at all the developments that have happened since then. Now, before I get into it, this video is sponsored by Unibet, who are supporting United People's TV through this transfer window. And over there, there's a fantastic article from Andy Mitten on how Man United really have struggled to replace Roy Keane. I'm gonna be speaking about it properly later in the video, but there's a link in the description you can go and follow. Head over to the Unibet blog and read it for yourself. It's a good one. But let's talk about Bruno Fernandes. Now, unfortunately for United fans, what you think about Bruno Fernandes to United and whether you think it's gonna happen relies almost exclusively on what newspaper you read and when you've read it. Because there's nothing but conflicting stories. If you look at the British press right now, it almost looks like they're reporting a brief from United. That United are getting irritated by these Bruno Fernandes rumours and that there's nothing in it at all. That United aren't interested in Bruno Fernandes and this is nothing more than a ploy from Sporting Lisbon to increase the bids for their player, Bruno Fernandes. Now, you can look at that from two ways. One, it being a brief from the club, and that's what I feel it is. But at the same time, if United really were interested in Fernandes, they would probably want that. Eyes elsewhere. Is this just a diversion tactic from United to keep the eyes away from the transfer that they are working on? Some would say that's the case. Others would argue that United aren't smart enough to do that in the transfer window. There's absolutely no chance that's the truth. But that's really what the British press are saying at the moment. But the majority of the noise around Bruno Fernandes to United has definitely been coming from the Portuguese press, who have been absolutely relentless all summer long. The Portuguese press have been putting out daily stories about Fernandes to United and used every single word for close in the English dictionary. Imminent, next 24 hours, next two days. They've really exhausted it. To the point where it feels a little bit like, I suppose, a Schneider or a Garay or Gaitan situation, those transfer sagas that went on and on and on for United fans and ended up with none of the players actually joining us. So it all depends on where you've been looking all summer long. Certainly the majority of the noise has come from the Portuguese press, which I said earlier in my full story look part one. And that's not really changed in part two, but the British press, while they piqued their interest for about a week or so, have now reverted to this almost brief from the club, that's what I think it looks like, that United aren't interested at all, that we never have been. But if we're not interested in Bruno Fernandes, who the hell are we interested in? Because we certainly need a midfielder. Because no matter how you look at it, United's midfield is simply not good enough to compete with Liverpool and City in the Premier League. And that has to be our aim next season. And Bruno Fernandes' arrival would add a massive, massive piece of quality into that midfield. No longer would we be too reliant on Paul Pogba to provide an attacking spark from midfield. You'd have someone like Fernandes who contributed to over 50 goals last year, I think, for Sporting Lisbon. That would take a lot of pressure away from Pogba. And so much has been said about Pogba, you know, stepping up, being the captain that United needed. And we certainly need a captain like Roy Keane. And as, he, as I said earlier, the article from Andy Mitten on how United have failed to replace Roy Keane is really a cracking read. So I would encourage you to go over to the Unibet blog, make sure you click the link in the description and go over there and read it for yourself because the players like Brian Robson, Roy Keane, Eric Cantona, these charismatic team leading figures that captains should be, United haven't had for some time. Now Bruno Fernandes' arrival wouldn't be that sort of captain, but it's interesting to know and to remember that the problems in midfield for United aren't just about bringing more attacking quality going forward. We need a a leader, a defensive leader, maybe in midfield. Certainly, I would say we do. Someone like Roy Keane, any team would need that. But make sure you head over there. There's a link in the description. It helps United People's TV as well. So why wouldn't you? But let's get back to talking about Bruno Fernandes. Looking away from all the speculation and conjecture that's been going on in the press, what's actually been officially said by Sporting Lisbon and Bruno Fernandes himself. Let's talk about Sporting first and Sporting's president, Frederico Verandas. 
Speaking about Bruno, he said, I don't know if there are many or if there are a few interested clubs. What I know, a lot has been spoken of the values coming to the press, 55 million euros, 62 million euros. For that, he doesn't leave, for sure. So, Sporting have basically been putting Bruno Fernandes in the shop window all summer long, letting these reports come out. Maybe they're the ones feeding these reports in the Portuguese press, and it's their attempts to drive up the price of their player. But certainly, they're happy for him to leave if the right bid comes in. It's just that it hasn't so far. And if you look at the start of the window, when City were linked with him, when Liverpool were linked with him, when the United were linked with him, you understood that they were expecting a bidding war. Maybe that bidding war isn't going to be there, and that's why United have been biding their time. Because, as you know, we do love saving those pennies. But what has Bruno said about the transfer himself? When asked about it, he said the president decides that, not me, in terms of him leaving. I don't care about the market. I've talked about this many times. The only thing I can do now is I need to catch the plane so I don't miss it. Will this be my last match for sporting? I don't know. It's the coach who decides. I said I'd like to play in England, but I don't care about it right now. So Bruno's made it very clear. He'd like to play in the Premier League, and why wouldn't he? It is the best league in the world. So Bruno wouldn't mind leaving. It's clear that Sporting wouldn't mind selling Bruno if the right bid came in. So in that sense, what's actually been officially said is clear and obvious. It's just that reporting behind it from the Portuguese press and the British press has been a bit of a muddled mess. And Bruno himself has added to that after Sporting Lisbon's game against Valencia in the pre-season, he was crying. Take a look at the video for yourself. Some see this as a goodbye from Bruno Fernandes. It's, look, he's crying after the game. This is his last appearance of Sporting Lisbon. Surely that's confirmation that he's leaving and joining United. And others think it's totally, what are you trying to make a story out of somebody crying for? I suppose we've reached peak Bruno Fernandes because it's, it's not going to get any more muppetry than this. Trying, trying to analyse somebody crying as being a hint towards a transfer. But that's the situation we find ourselves in with Bruno Fernandes. It has been just muppetry all summer long. So many stories about an imminent move that hasn't happened, 24 hours that hasn't happened, yet here we are still. And United fans are certainly hoping that we do sign Bruno Fernandes because he would be a top class signing. And whether it's Bruno Fernandes or not, or somebody else, United need quality in midfield, both in attack and in defence. I would argue that a defensive midfielder is more of a priority, but adding someone like Bruno Fernandes would bring so much to our midfield that it needs next season. You can't just rely on Pogba to have a good game for United's midfield to have a good game, the whole team overall. But what's your take on this? Bruno Fernandes, will it happen? Won't it happen? I suppose that is the million dollar question. Unfortunately, nobody's got an answer, but somebody who will have an answer, is all of us in 11 days' time when the transfer window closes. Do you think that he'll play for United next season, that we're going to see Bruno Fernandes holding up that United shirt before the transfer window shuts? Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video and it's helped you understand it a bit more, make sure you subscribe as well if you're new. Until next time, though, take it easy.